Hello and welcome to Historic Matthews Arena for the 26th Annual Mayor's Cup Youth Hockey Tournament. We've got a good one at the Squirt AA level as it's the Charlestown Townies and the Dorchester Chiefs. My name is Seth Ransky, joined by Alan Siegel, and we should have a good one today at this younger level. Yeah, no question about it. Both teams fought hard to get to this championship level here. Uh, Charlestown, always a great team. Dorchester, they're always in the championship year after year. So both teams are going to be fighting it out very big time for the championship here tonight here at Matthews Arena. And while some of the kids might not recognize how historic of a venue that Matthews is, of course, the former home of the Celtics and the home of the Northeastern University Huskies at the basketball and hockey level, it's a chance for these guys to make a little bit more history at a very historic arena. Yeah, absolutely. These kids probably don't even remember that this was uh, uh, home to the Celtics years and years ago and probably the circus uh, way back when as well. But they'll be able to uh, make some memories. And, of course, with uh, us here today to videotape this action, uh, they're going to have memories for a lifetime. We'll be back after break here on ASPN HD. Honey, what I think you need is a socket wrench. I played JV basketball. I'm sorry. I don't think it looks right. This is good, and it's all is good, it, baby. Is it really all good? If you love me enough to routinely test your handyman skills, not to mention the strength of your marriage, then of course you'll visit nhtsa.gov slash the right seat to make sure I'm in the right car seat. I'm going to call my dad. We've got the Squirt Double A level with the Charlestown Townies and the Dorchester Chiefs. My name is Seth Ransky, joined by Alan Siegel. And Alan, to make this entire tournament possible, we'd like to give a shout out to our sponsors. The big sponsors for today's tournament, the Boston Parks and Recreation, with support from presenting sponsor Boston Bruins Foundation, and additional support from PNG Gillette. And this game brings us two very strong goaltenders at the nine to 10 year level. What do we expect to see out of these two promising young goalies? Hopefully lots of saves. <laughs> Hopefully lots of saves and, uh, uh, you know, keep the puck out of the net, hopefully. And, uh, of course, the goaltenders are going to need some support from their defense and forwards as well to get back and back check and uh, do, do the little things that, that's hopefully going to propel them to the Mayor's Youth Cup Championship game here today. For Charlestown in the red uniforms, it'll be Leo Sutich in net. And for Dorchester in the red, it'll be Jack Bossimer. He's winning the opening faceoff is Charlestown, sporting some really cool jerseys. They've got the Bunker Hill Monument on the front of their jersey. That's a newer look and a really nice one from the Dorchester organizers as it's controlled right now and an early shot. That's a save from Sutich as he's able to deny Brooks in the early going. 13 minutes running clock periods here at the squirt double A level. Controlling it in the zone right now is Dorchester, at least for the moment, tipped out into the neutral zone. It's a good four check presser from Harrison Fisher, but it's one back by Dorchester. And we've got an early offside. Good shot early on. Nice save there by Sutich. As Dorchester gets the first shot of the game on net. Faceoff comes just outside the Charlestown zone. And it's won back by Charlestown. Still looking for their first shot of the game. Get it across the red line, but it'll be turned around by Francis Armstrong. Back into the Dorchester zone and now flipped back in where Coleman Wolfson gives chase. Wolfson all alone behind the goal line. A little bit of four check pressure. Slowing down the play there by Cameron Sizchak. And on the puck is Sebastian Vuno. Loses it just shy of the red line and now picking it up, heading back into his own zone is Wolfson. Wolfson sends a cross ice pass deep into the Dorchester zone. Playing it high off the boards, but kept in by Wolfson for a moment. It will spark a little bit of a rush here. Sizchak slowed down by Vuno, tries to cut back. And the puck is won there by Charlestown for the moment. Back and forth opening two minutes, but we've only seen the one shot as these two teams feel each other out here in the 2019 Mayor's Cup Youth Hockey Tournament Championship game at the Squirts AA level. Wilson leaves it behind the 
net and sending it in front and scoring is Dorchester at the near post. And let's try to get you the name and number of that young fellow. Number, what is that? I believe Chance? it's going to be Cameron Sizjak, number 91, who was all alone at the near post and able to poke it home. Yeah, what, once again, loose puck behind the net, just shot it right in front of the net, and the goaltender mishandled it, and they, uh, Sikaz puts it in, and Dorchester has the early 1-0 lead. Chance for an odd man rush, but unable to find an open teammate there was Charlestown, as it's an early 1-0 lead. Sizjak was one of two wide open Dorchester players and able to poke the puck home. Got another face off. He's definitely spent more time in and around the Dorchester defensive zone than we've seen time in the Charlestown defensive zone. Mannion controls in the slot. Backhand feed to Brooks, who can't quite keep the puck with him. Nice pass there, but great defensive play by the Charlestown Townies to, miss, to interrupt that pass. Quinn McGeady floats it back in below the goal line. Once again, Charlestown forced to retreat into their own end. He's trying to skate through traffic there with Sebastian Knees. And McGeady able to keep it in. We've got a couple times from this Dorchester side where they've done a really good job of keeping the pressure on Charlestown, unable to get the puck out of their own zone. Dorchester looks like they just have a little bit more of a jump than Charlestown right now. Again, Dorchester able to keep the puck in. Push the puck behind the net. Now they'll put some four-check pressure on. Good skating by a defenseman to get through a couple players and now losing the puck right at center ice. Seeing Sebastian Knees, one of a couple of really good puck-carrying defensemen for this Charlestown team. As Brooks sends it just wide. It's Emery DeRove on the far side. Chance for a three-on-two rush. Gets around one defenseman, Brooks comes over, the lone defenseman back and able to clear it away off the boards. Important interception there for Dorchester as Charlestown had numbers in the zone. Yeah, DeRove with a great play off the boards, just couldn't reach it, reach it to pass it in front. Dorchester in the midst of a change, three on two in the offensive end. Shot from the circle goes wide off the stick of Brendan Banks. Chester just barely able to get it out of the zone and now into the zone with Armstrong. Backhand feed looking for Stock. Broke it up and it'll go the other way with Charlestown. Pass out in front. It's Matthew Sorgini has a man to his left. Quick shot and scores. Matthew Sorgini goes near side, beats the goalie glove side, and it's 1 1. First shot of the net for Charlestown. Great play, just passed it up in front, and Sorghini came in and with a nice wrist shot, beat the goaltender, Bowsmer, and it's a tie ball game at one. Nearing the midway point of this first period, we're all even at one, a goal within the first two minutes for Dorchester, but Charlestown able to return the favor, and now an own goal, throwing the puck from an awkward angle was a Dorchester player, and it goes off the stick of a Charlestown player and in. The goal is going to be credited to Gerard Stock, and it's 2-1 just like that. That's the way you want to answer if you're Dorchester. Well, in this level of, of hockey, you know, no shot is a bad shot. Once again, Stock just threw the puck towards the net, hit a stick of a Charlestown defender, and went past the goaltender for a 2-1 lead for uh, Dorchester. Nothing Leo Sutich could have done about that one. Just a little bit of bad luck for Charlestown, who had just gotten back into the game on the goal by Sorghini. 2-1 at the midway point of period number one in this U Championship at the Squirt AA level. Charlestown looking to corral the puck and come up with an answer as it's Jack Kachuk feeding it forward, kept in the zone by Dorchester. On the far side, it's Harrison Fisher playing off the boards, able to find Sorghini, the goal scorer. Sorghini looking for a second if he can keep the puck with him. Has two players in front, centers it but behind the net. And now coming back over to keep the puck in play is Connor Mansfield. Mansfield sends it down low where there's a pair of defensemen for Dorchester. 
just past the reach of Sebastian Knees. And now coming all the way back below his own goal line to pick it up is Connor Mansfield, as we'll see changes for both sides. 540 left in this first period. It's Dorchester leading 2-1. Knees once again looking for options. We've seen terrific forecheck pressure from Dorchester throughout this game. McGeady able to find a team at the top of the circle. Skinner's a shot wide. Centering feed gets tapped out, and the long reach is enough to win it for Finley Hassel. Hassel has a teammate ahead. Instead, he'll take it himself and offsides there. Henry Bollock Gonzalez just a step ahead there, was looking for the puck. Yeah, in this level of hockey, you know, both teams they obviously got to get their you know skating legs underneath them. But uh, this is a great learning experience because you know you want to get the puck and then make a decision quickly. And obviously here in this level of hockey, uh, that's not the case so far. But that's why you play the game and that's why you're learning. Well, and Alan, a big thing is just trusting your teammates. A lot sometimes you'll see players not pass the puck because they're not sure they're going to get the puck back, and some of the better teams are those teams that have chemistry and trust in recognizing I'll get the puck back if I go to the right spot as that was a very obvious offside. We'll get a face off just outside the zone. The other part, kind of learning the rules. Sometimes you want to go into the zone. Sometimes you recognize, hey, a couple players are offside. Got to wait. Got to dribble it out. There's a face off win for Charlestown. Brandon Banks looked like he wanted to go into the zone immediately. Worcester able to tap the puck away and out of the zone. Doing a better job this time of waiting and getting it forward is Charlestown as they find themselves behind 2-1. They tied it midway through the period but gave up a goal on the next shift on a shot that tipped off the stick of a Charlestown defenseman and in their own goal. Puck is going to be just across the blue line and another offside on Dorchester who came out the aggressor, immediately got an answer and Thus far, it's really been their forechecking that's been the difference. They've really flustered this Charlestown team who's really only had the one chance in this game. Yeah, four to one in shots right now for Dorchester, and they obviously have the two goals. But you're right, absolutely. They are seem to be skating a little bit better than Charlestown right now, which is obviously hindering Charlestown's defense to get the puck out of the zone. Great stick work there by a Dorchester player who loses an edge. And now another chance. This Dorchester team has really relied upon their defensemen to keep the puck in the zone as they've had numbers pushing forward. DeRove unable to clear the zone. Down to under three minutes to go in period number one. And there's another good piece of stick work. Finding a player in front and the shot goes just wide there. That was Sakaz who scored the first of the two goals for this Dorchester team. And then it's Nice, who is one of the better puck carriers on this Charlestown team. A lot of their better puck carriers seem to be defensemen, which works great, but you've got to be able to connect on those passes. Yeah, right now they're just having trouble getting the puck out of the zone. Great zone time, offensive zone time for Dorchester right now. And Dorchester hasn't been able to turn it into any shots on goal, but you've got to figure if they're able to continue to just push and push, at some point they're going to create an opportunity. And with it is Sorghini. He scored the lone goal as DeRoe to his right. Sorghini's got a tremendous amount of skill. Sorghini all the way to the circle sends a shot that's knocked down and held on. Good work that time by Jack Bossimer, who makes his first save on the man who scored the first goal of the day for Charlestown. Yeah, Sorghini obviously great skating ability coming over the left side of the uh, ice and had a man in front, just didn't see him, decided to take the shot and look for a rebound. Dorchester able to win the defensive zone draw and they bring it out of the zone. Work from Brooks. They'll dump it in with under a minute 30 to go in period number one. Dorchester has not trailed in this game. They scored the opening goal and immediately answered as here's a two on one chance if they hurry. It's Banks, Brandon Banks trying to feed it around the boards. As Charlestown looks for that second goal Potentially, they're just their third shot of the game. Turnover and now a chance to go two on two the other way, but a good defensive play for Sebastian Vuno to break up that chance. 
Under a minute to go in the first period. And we've got another offsides. It was John Brooks just a step too early. 40 seconds to go with that running clock. And the Charlestown coaches using the board over there on the far side, trying to draw up a play here for this faceoff with 30 seconds to go in the period. They win the faceoff forward. That's Brandon Banks putting some pressure on the defense, been able to keep it in the zone with 20. Banks slows, has two players in front, doesn't get anything behind the shot. And it's controlled by Dorchester for a moment. Banks wins it back with eight seconds left. Don't think he's going to have enough time. Banks still with it from the far circle. Dangles around behind the net with two centering feed, and they're not going to get a shot off. The puck ends up in the glove of Bossomer as the clock expired. An exciting first 13 minutes, Allen. And realistically, I think we saw something a little bit there in the final minute or two from Charlestown as they start to figure out what they need to do to get back into this game. Well, what they got to do is, is really utilize the open man. You know, right now it just seems to be uh, one on four or five right now, but uh, but the, they shot it in front of the net. Bossomer dove to cover up the puck, and that ended that first period. Give, take a moment to give a shout out to some of our sponsors, Boston Parks and Recreation Department, the Boston Bruins Foundation, and P&G Gillette. We'll take a quick break and be back in the second period. When I was 10, my mom got deported. We had a difficult time, and I feel that's why I didn't get to finish school. My husband is really supportive in a way that he pushed me to go back to school. She wants to have a career so her kids can look up to her. They both keep me motivated to go to school, and they see that if I do it, like they can do it too, you know? I feel that everything's possible. Find free adult education classes near you at finishyourdiploma.org. Welcome back to the second period of today's Squirt AA Championship between the Charlestown Townies and the Dorchester Chiefs. It's Dorchester leading 2-1 after 1 here at Matthews Arena on the campus of Northeastern University. Just one of several schools who have been so kind in hosting games throughout this 26th annual Mayor's Cup Youth Hockey Championship. Going from right to left here in the second period is Charlestown and coming in with speed. A quick shot and a high wrister that goes in. Believe that was Sebastian Nice, And it was as the defenseman comes all the way from his own end and scores just 30 seconds into the second to tie the game at two. Yeah, what a rush by Nice coming in from his own defensive zone, coming over the line, made a move, got by a shot. Uh, Dorchester defenseman and took a nice hard wrist shot that, that the goaltender Bossomer had no chance at to tie this hockey game up at two. Now we've got an icing call against Dorchester which will give Charlestown an offensive zone draw and a chance to potentially earn their first lead of the game. In the first period it was Dorchester taking early 1-0 lead. Charlestown answered on the goal for Matthew Sorghini and immediately Dorchester responded on the next shift. So we'll see if Charlestown can do a better job of not giving up the momentum here. But a really nice job by the Charlestown coaches of drawing something up. And again, we talked about those defensemen being a bit better with the puck. And that was Nice coming from his own zone, going the length of the ice, and then a really strong finish. Yeah, good strong skater Nice was and went over that line, made a defenseman, slipped past the defenseman, and no, no chance the goaltender had on that play. McGeady. Will dump that one in and let his teammates give chase. Wilson, the first player there for Charlestown, able to clear the zone, and now McGeady's got a lot of pressure on him. Centering feed will come all the way to the near side where it's picked up by Stock. Stock has a goal today for Dorchester. Puck bounces around, and it's kept in there for the moment, but just over the stick of McGeady as he'll have to retreat. D to D pass, very dangerous. And Charlestown really playing at a better level to start this second period than they were to start the first. Yeah, they seem to get some momentum at the end of that first period, and now they seem to be uh, right on, you know, skating a little bit better and playing a lot better here in this early second period. Wilson's pass off the boards, a little strong for Shanks. It'll come all the way down, no icing. But we'll see five new skaters for Charlestown. 
And this could be an icing, is it? Oh, no, they're going to wave it off. Icing rules a little bit different at the squirt double A level. It's got to be very obvious. And a chance here. Charlestown has numbers four. There's a player asking for the puck. And slowing it down is Connor Mansfield, who will try to win it back. Still with it is Mansfield. Finally stripped of the puck along the far boards, and he'll take a player down. And we've got our first penalty of the game as Mansfield a bit too physical, but first we've got to get a touch up. And getting to the puck is Sebastian Needs. Yeah, interference right there. Obviously in this level of hockey, there is no checking. And so he's going to go to the sin bin for two minutes, or actually not a two minutes, probably a minute and a half. Yeah, I think it's a 90 second penalty with the 13 minute periods. It was Connor, or James Swanson rather, who was the player who was able to break up the play and then drew the penalty. A nice job by the defenseman for Dorchester. So first power play of the game for uh, Dorchester. We'll see what they can do here. Charlestown, his coach is screaming out instructions here. First PK of the day, but they are able to pick up the puck and now they're trying to get off the races. That was Brandon Banks who tried to go in one-on-one -on -one with the goal. He's been stripped of the puck in the neutral zone. Banks cherry picking a bit, able to get there. He's got Sorghini to his right. Banks still with it. Banks takes a shot from the slot, knocked away by the stick of Bossamer. Didn't have to see a lot of shots in the first period, but made a nice save late in the period. And there's his first save in the second. Dorchester trying to create a chance here on the power play. Centering feed gets knocked down and it's cleared out towards the blue line and just past the defenseman. Got another offside coming with 38 seconds to go on the power play. Remember with this running clock. It's an abbreviated power play, I would say. And right now, Dorchester, no shots here in the second period. Even with this power play, Charlestown has two, one, uh, shorthanded shot that was sticked aside by the goaltender uh, Bossamer. It's a good start for Dorchester. A 1-0 and 2-1 lead in the first period. Outshot Charlestown 4-2. Racing back to get this one is Coleman Wolfson. Wolfson though finds the opposing D McGeady and we've got no offsides no call coming as we're back to 5-on-5. Five five. So Dorchester unable to do much with their first power play. Now it's Sorghini. Sorghini splits the double team. Sorghini splits another double team. Sorghini is just out of his reach. Can he get there? Slowed down, tries to get a centering feed. So all that brilliant stick work, but the puck just a bit too far out ahead. And that's the one trouble for Sorghini. He's a great skater, but he's one of the smaller guys on the team for either side, just a little bit too far for his reach. And that's something where, as he grows, he's going to be even more dangerous. Oh, absolutely, especially uh, he's like a little Theo Fleury, Johnny Goudreau, Jack Eichel, one of those type players. Sakaz loses it. He's had really good stick work for this Dorchester side. Sakaz centering feet. No one's home, though. It was a really nice placement from Cameron Sakaz. Kept in the Charlestown defensive zone. Finally pushed out and dumped right back in. This is where Dorchester had Charlestown for much of the first period pinned in their own zone as we've got a stoppage midway through the second. You know, I just realized I dated myself by saying Theo Fleury. So you kids watching at home, you might have to use the internet to check out Google and find out who Theo Fleury is. Yeah, I think they probably have a better <laughs> idea of Eichel and Gaudreau as Mannion's shot hits the defenseman, gets his own rebound, tries to get a look off. Another nice job of the defenseman to slow down the look. And coming out with speed is Finley Hassel. Hassel has a man to or his player to his left or right. That was Harrison Fisher. Not necessarily a man in this contest. We've got boys and girls at the squirt double-A level. It's Nice who scored that game-tying goal here in the second period, stripped of the puck, and that'll be sent down the length of the ice. No icing coming here. First one to it is Jack Kachuk. Kachuk able to clear the zone, but not much further in another icing. You know, I'm seeing a lot of Charlestown players just looking at the, uh, the, the skater with the puck. They're not really skating ahead to give the guy with the puck an opportunity to make the open pass. 
Sorghini and Sakaz in the face off top. Sorghini able to tap it forward. Emery DeRoe slows it down. She's had a strong game today. She has. She's, she's one of the few players who's provided an option along the boards. Good positioning from one of the lone females in this contest. Good defensive work there by Vuno working against a couple of Dorchester yeah, we're players. We're going to have a delayed penalty. It looks like a trip. Sorghini, on so still, gets around the defenseman one on one with Bosimer. Sorghini looking for his second, and he's denied. Goes, tries to go 5 all twice, and both times Bosimer stands up to the test. There will be a power play, but it easily could have been the first lead of the day for Charlestown. What a, what a rush by Sorghini. I mean, he uh, delayed penalty on, on the play. He slipped past two Dorchester defensemen, came in, made a nice move, but what a great save by Bosimer with the right pad there and then the rebound, and Bosimer covered that one up as well. So now Charlestown is going on the power play, and they've outshot Dorchester here in the second period 4-0. It'll be Cameron Sakaz in the box for a minute 30. Four minutes to go in the second period. A chance for Charlestown to take their first lead. Nice job keeping it in the zone by Vuno. Came all the way across. It's Derove trying to cycle it down low. Two players there for both sides. Sorghini comes away with it at the top of the near circle. Sorghini in the slot, slows down, tries to keep control of the puck. And another job, nice job by Vuno to keep it alive. To the stick of Sorghini. Sorghini has a great shot. Bosimer will cover up this look, and we'll get a stoppage midway through the power play. One power play shot, one penalty, one penalty kill shot on net for Charlestown. Five shots total, and Sorghini again with some fancy stick handling and skating, but they just couldn't get the open man to get the open shot and the, and the goal. 5-0 in shots this period for Charlestown over Dorchester. They also have the lone goal of the period. Dorchester trying to do something about that as they win the defensive zone draw. Controlling it here is John Brooks, and he'll dump it in, and we'll see Dorchester make a couple changes. Still 15 seconds left in the power play. Yeah, if they hurry, they have one opportunity to get an offensive shot here on the power play, but looks like they're going to let it run out. Into the zone, working with it is Jack Kachuk, who gets upended. No call coming, and Dorchester back to five on five, and they have the puck. Another great defensive job by Brendan Banks. We've seen Charlestown do a much better job of forechecking here in the second period, keeping the puck in the zone. And Dorchester will attempt to clear once again with two and a half to go in the period. Puck comes all the way in, and Bossomer has to make a glove save, and now a second save as the puck is just out of the reach of a Charlestown player out in front. Bossomer's really picked up his play here in the second period, although he's lost his stick. Yeah, he's scrambling all over the place. He did lose his stick, but he did make some two great saves there. Two minutes to go in the second period. Charlestown and Dorchester all even in the Squirt AA Championship of this 26th Annual Mayor's Cup Youth Tournament. John Brooks into the zone, one on three. Brooks still with it, trying to keep control of the puck. Finally loses it. And now Dorchester wins it back with the four check. Brooks at the top of the slot has a player fall in front of him. Brooks still with it near the top of the slot. And it's Nice coming away with a big shot deflection. What a play by Nice to get back and deflect that shot by Brooks. Brooks looked like he had a wide open opportunity to get that shot, but Nice was there to deflect it away. Really good shift there from John Brooks, one of the best we've seen in the period for Dorchester and what's been a difficult second period after they really played well in the first. Brooks and Manny in there trying to keep the puck in the zone. Brooks comes away with it along the near circle. 67 seconds to go in the second period. We're all tied at two. Sakaz, who took that penalty, unable to hold on, and it's Balik Gonzalez. Balik Gonzalez feeds it across, and it's going to be offside. I don't mind the pass there, just unfortunately just behind a player, and they'll be whistled offsides with 45 seconds and a faceoff just outside oh. the Dorchester zone. Yeah, these are things that these little these kids have to learn. They have to learn to, to stay onside. They have to learn to skate, keep their head up, keep their sticks down, uh, learn to use the open man. These are all things that they're going to learn as, the, as they get older. Hassel centering feed finds Sorghini, whose shot is knocked down by Stock. Big play by the Dorchester defenseman. 
Paso with a great pass to find the open man, Sorghini. Centering feed, able to find Sorghini, who tries to go back door for Balak Gonzalez. Still 10 seconds to go as Charlestown looks for their first lead. Pass on able to control. Down to five seconds as Dorchester's just looking to kill off these final five seconds. Balak Gonzalez, not enough time. And we head to the second intermission with a 2-2 score. Allen, a big difference between the first 13 and the second 13 as this was dominated by Charlestown. Yeah, no question about it. They outshot Dorchester 7 to nothing in that second period. You know, maybe nerves. You never know what, what happens in that first period. They first come out, first game of the day. But they definitely played a lot better in that second period. As for Dorchester, uh, they might have sat back a little bit thinking that they might have a, an easier time here as they had a great first period. But the second period, they got to pick up their uh, skating ability and get things moving here for the third and final period. I'd like to take a moment to thank our sponsors, the Massachusetts Department of Conservation and Recreation, FMC Ice Sports, Boston University, Northeastern University, Harvard University, and Boston College. We'll take a quick break and be back for the third period. When we adopt a shelter pet, we discover they're a unique mix of all kinds of things. Come on, Joe, spot on this last one. Uh, there it is. He's gone with it. Leo! <laughs> they're a little bit of a lot of things, but they're all pure love. Welcome back to the third period of play here at Matthews Arena. It's 2-2 between Charlestown and Dorchester in the Squirt A Championship. Coverage provided by ASPN HD of this 2019 Mayor's Cup Youth Hockey Championship. Winning the faceoff is Dorchester. It's Mannion flipping a shot that might have been tipped high. As Dorchester did not get a shot off for most of that second period, but they start the third period strong. Coming the other way with speed there was Vuno. Had the puck tipped away by a defenseman with a desperation play. Centering feet knocked away. As Jack Bossmer has been very busy over the past 13 to 15 minutes of game action. Seth Dorensky joined by Alan Siegel at Matthews Arena for the final 13 minutes potentially of this Squirt AA Championship. Awkward angle shot and it goes in. He didn't even recognize it. John Brooks able to give Dorchester their third lead of the game. Brooks had turned and was already focused on getting back to the blue line when that puck trickled through Leo Sutich and gave Dorchester their third lead of the day. Yeah, Brooks just had the puck in the right wing corner, just skated towards the net, took a nice shot. Uh, the goaltender made the save, Sutich, but the puck just trickled behind him and Dorchester has their another lead, their third lead of the afternoon. Cameron Sakaz tries to leave it in front, backhand shot, and Sutich makes his biggest save of the game. It's okay to go down one. You don't want to find yourself down two here with about 11 and a half to go, and Sutich able to get down low and keep that puck in front. Yeah, that was a great save by Sutich right there, but it looks like Dorchester has their skating legs back. Maybe they don't like to go the other way. Yeah, I was about to say, maybe <laughs> it's just attacking <laughs> this end maybe of the ice. Maybe it's like going to the, yeah, from right to left. Uh, 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 yeah, from uh, right to left, I guess. I don't know. Four of the five goals today have been scored going right to left in this Squirt A championship. We'll see if that trend continues. Dorchester controls. It's Sakaz who's had a very nice day for Dorchester. Over for Armstrong, losing the puck and coming over to get it is Harrison Fisher. Fisher with two players to his right, loses the puck and Sakaz has it for a moment. Coming back to get it is Sorghini, who's one of the most dangerous players on the ice for either side. Sakaz and the defenseman over skate the puck, and now he sends it in on Sutich, who makes the standing up body save and holds on with the glove. Ten and a half to go, and these, these are big saves for Sutich, who didn't have to see the puck at all in that second period. And Maybe, seen a lot of yeah. traffic here. Maybe here in the second period he fell asleep, and now in the third period that first shot obviously woke him up. A great save there, almost a, a mirror image of that first goal of the third goal here. Dorchester continues to apply pressures. There's a near hit. Harrison Fisher with good speed finds Sorghini. 
Sorghini's the man to watch for this Charlestown side as he's tripped up. Sorghini working there with Fisher, and they're able to keep the puck in the zone. Shot from distance gets knocked down by defenseman. Cycled around, Connolly there battling with Kachuk, and it's kept in the zone. Just out of the reach of Fisher, who will have to collect it off the far boards. Feed to the top of the circle is knocked down, and getting it out of the zone is Dorchester's. There's a three-player pile up at the blue line. Into the zone with speed, and the shot gets deflected wide off the stick of John Brooks. Good defensive work by Jack Kachuk, but Kachuk hasn't been able to get it out of his own zone yet. 9.15 to go. Dorchester has led three times in this game, all by a single goal. Kept in by Brooks. Brooks, the centering feed. Knocked down by the defenseman, and it's finds Sorghini. Sorghini around one player. To the center of the ice around a second. One defenseman back. Sorghini tries to slow down, and the puck just comes off the end of his stick. Could have so, been an offside right there, but the ref decided not to blow the whistle. Now it's Mannion. Centers it for Brooks. Has the player wide open along the back side. Finds him off the boards. Centering feed, and Mannion doesn't get much behind the shot. Kept in by McGeady. McGeady shot from distance, tipped away by the defenseman. Good work from Vuno. Coming out with speed, it's Coleman Wolfson. Wolfson with a ton of speed, tapped away a little bit by Swanson. His shot goes wide off the back post, and a centering shot slash feed goes wide by Bala Gonzalez, who had some daylight along the near post. He certainly did. He just missed it in the slot there. Almost looked like he got his body turned a little bit too much there. Spalik Gonzalez tries to win it back against Mannion. And he does. Centers it ahead. His teammate couldn't quite hold on, and now it'll come all the way in. Sutich is going to watch it go by. Here in the midway point of this third period, John Brooks right now would be the hero for Dorchester after he scored the go-ahead goal. Balak Gonzalez poke checks it forward, and now he'll go in on that, tries to dangle his way through a double team and loses the puck along the near side. Good defensive play by Dorchester, but he did have a man in front. Two on one chance here, Sakaz has it tipped away by the diving Brendan Banks. Sakaz gets the puck back, shoots it off the back of the skate, of a Charlestown player. Two Dorchester players around the puck, and it's one by Charlestown. It's Hassel. Three on two chance at the Harry. Finley Hassel still with it. Finley Hassel still with it, and it's stripped away. What a great defensive play by what looks to be Ryan Higgins. Yeah, Higgins was a great play, but I'll tell you, he had, a, he had two men to his right, didn't see him, and didn't make the pass. Otherwise, they would have went in all alone. How about the decisiveness from Higgins? He recognized, okay, it's a three on two. I'm gonna go all the way back, skate forward, and make them beat me one on one. And Higgins able to come up with a big stop. So we've seen a couple of these Dorchester, on both Dorchester goals, they've got really good shots. It's just been an issue of getting enough looks in this contest. So we've passed the midway point. It's Dorchester leading it three to two. Leans the zone with speed, his niece. He loses it after scoring a goal early. Now it's Sorghini, the other goal scorer. The turnaround shot is knocked down by the defenseman, Armstrong. Still six minutes left. Puck bounces around and it's brought into the zone by DeRoe. Kept alive in the zone for a moment. And it's finally brought out to the neutral zone where it's picked up by Dorchester. Manny gets the feedback from Brooks, but it's tipped away. So Regini had a defenseman right in front of him. Skates through one, tries to skate through two more. Seen him do that before. One on three right now. Make it one on four. Gets a shot off, but it's knocked down. We know Sorghini is capable of scoring and, and skating through a couple of players, but we've seen Dorchester do a much better job of putting a lot of bodies around it. Yeah, they definitely collapse a little bit down low to, to prevent, like, like they did on that last shot, uh, to prevent the shot to go through. We're going to see a timeout taken by Charlestown as they're going to draw something up on this offensive 
on this faceoff just outside the offensive zone. Of course, we also want to thank uh, Boston Mayor Martin Walsh here tonight, uh, the Boston Bruins Foundation, P&G Gillette, obviously the Boston Parks and Recreation Department, and of course UMass Boston. They've had some games uh, of this 26. You can't go 26 years without having uh, all the venues being available and ex readily accessible. And so uh, obviously Northeastern, Harvard, BU, BC, uh, UMass Boston, and all the other venues out there in, in the city of Boston. Of course, the Boston Warrior Ice Arena. The new, oh yes, that's right. New yeah. Boston Bruins practice facility hosted a couple of championship games. They hosted four. Matthews Arena here at Northeastern hosting four, and of course Connie Forum up at BC will host the final eight games, 16 championships this year as part of the Mayor's Cup Youth Hockey Championship. That's so exciting to see. It's even it's even more exciting when Ireland Showstack Video Productions is on on tap. ASPN HD. So they, uh, you know, it makes it even that much more special uh, to watch these championships uh, for not only uh, months and years to come. 5-12 to go in the third period. They'll put the face off in the offensive zone. And it bounces around, kept in the zone here by Charlestown. The centering feed, a couple of players there and trying to get a shot off, pushing it wide is Harrison Fisher. Still fighting for the puck, coming up to get it and keeping it alive is Wolfson. Wolfson to the stick of Mansfield who couldn't hold on. Working with it now is Vuno. Puck bounces around and a chance for Dorchester to clear the zone and they're able to do so. Well, right now, Charlestown, they don't have any shots on net. They've had some offensive opportunities, but no shots on net. They just called a timeout. They did get some offensive zone pressure, but yet no shots on net. That, right now, they got to get some shots towards the net to make uh, Bo Bossomer make some saves here with less than five minutes to go here in this championship game. And that's the difference really in this game. Dorchester has scored three goals. Two of them haven't necessarily been the prettiest of goals, but if you put the puck on net, sometimes it works out your ways. Here's a chance in front. A pair of Dorchester players there, and Connolly's shot is deflected wide by a diving Coleman Wilson. A chance for Charlestown, although losing the puck just shy of the line was Harrison Fisher. Still three minutes and 50 seconds left to tie or win this game if you're a Charlestown fan. The other for question is, will they pull the goaltender, and when will they pull the goaltender? And remember, at this level, you got to pull your goaltender a little bit earlier because it takes the goaltender a little bit longer to get over <laughs> to the bench. <laughs> that is true. Not even just a goal, not even these young kids. Me too. If I was a goaltender, it'd take me forever to get out there. Sebastian Nice unable to clear the zone, and Sikaz will just dump it in, and that's a really effective way to kill some clock right now. The longer Dorchester can just keep Charlestown pinned in their own end, better chance they have of killing off this clock and winning this squirt double-A championship. Here is Charlestown, and it's Sorghini. Scored the first one, Sorghini gets Bossmer, shoots and scores! Top shelf on the near side, he's got two, and we're tied at three with three minutes to go. Well, not only does he have a goal scorer's move, but he also has a goal scorer's celebration. Uh, we were just talking about the, the the offensive there for Charlestown, and right there, Sorghini comes over the line and takes a nice wrist shot. I mean, Bomeister, I mean, he should shoot Sue there because that was an unbelievable shot up into the top corner. Nothing he could do about that one. Clock stops at 2.59, and we've got a tie game here in the Squirt AA Championship. Dorchester has led three times by a single goal, and all three times, Charlestown has come back to tie the game. Will Dorchester score a fourth goal and win it, or will Charlestown score a fourth goal and earn their only lead of the game and earn the victory? Got an offside against Dorchester. And, and now with less than uh, five minutes to go in the game and a tie score, the clock does stop. So that means that this clock's not running, obviously, which means that there's lots of two minutes and 27 seconds. That's a lot of time for these young kids. Big face off just outside the Charlestown defensive zone, won by Dorchester. They play it into the zone where it's controlled by Coleman Wolfson. Push it right back into the zone with Armstrong, who's just a bit offside. And now here's, here's the key here. Now, you, you have to be smart with the puck. I mean, if you have 
a, you know, a player, or not a play, dump the puck in the offensive zone. Don't try to make, don't try to be too fancy. Let's just try not to be, uh, let's be smart about the puck and not make uh, you know, bad, in, bad decisions. Dorchester in the zone, fighting to poke it around. They have been probably the better team in terms of teamwork today. Passing the puck, forechecking for Charlestown on the opposite side. In terms of the individual skill, they have a slight edge. We've seen it from Sorghini, we've seen it from Meese. Right now, if you're Dorchester, you need to work together and you need to make sure that they don't get some of those rushes where some of their top players get a little bit of freedom to skate in on Bossomer. Yep, no question about that, obviously. And of course, too, when you get an offensive opportunity, shoot the puck. Puck comes all the way back into the Dorchester end where McGeady will track it down immediately, turns and fires it out of the zone. Charlestown recognizes that a player was very deep in the zone and they'll wait to touch up. And it allows Dorchester to come away with the puck and bring it into the Charlestown end and they'll dump it out. Giving chase here is Harrison Fisher, but McGeady's there first for Dorchester. Off the boards looking for Mannion. Mannion still pressuring the puck, but Brendan Banks with a nice little dangle to get around one and now two players. Loses it right at the top of the zone. And puck is loose in the neutral zone with a minute 15 to go. Coming away with it is Nice, who still battling for it, pokes it ahead, a chance for a little three on two here. But great defensive work by Quinn McGeady. Dorchester go, doing a great job defensively. When that puck is in de deep down low, they just get the puck and shoot it out. They're not fooling around with it. William McLaughlin's pass. Just a bit ahead of one of his teammates, but no icing here. A chance for Dorchester to maybe come away with the puck and come away with the goal in the final minute. Do we have a winner in regulation or will we go to overtime in the Squirt A Championship? Three on one opportunity at the Harry for Charlestown. Still with it, controlling it is Finley Hassel, who loses an edge, just shy. They still control it with 26 seconds. The clock operator stopped the clock for a moment, and now Dorchester has a chance the other way. With speed, it's Mannion. Mannion's shot, and it's stopped by oh, Sutton. Oh, what a save! Looked like there was a little bit of daylight. I now it's Sorghini so. with 10 seconds. Sorghini. It loses the puck, but it's picked up by a it's teammate. It's offside, though. I think the ref blew the whistle. It's offside. Wow, that would have been what very dramatic. What a save by Sutich. I thought he had the lower left-hand corner of the net, but he slid over from right to left to make the save with his pad, glove, elbow, shin guard. I don't know what he made the save with, but he made the save. Doesn't have to be pretty, just has to do the job. And that was a big one from Sutich on the other end. Great defensive job to slow down Sorghini, who was looking for the hat trick and the win. Three seconds left, draw just outside the Dorchester no, they, defensive zone. They'll put, put 10 seconds yeah. back up there. And the puck bounces around the Dorchester end. All they've got to do here is clear the zone to force overtime. And we've got another whistle with 1.5 seconds to go, which should just about do it. So what a dramatic first 39 minutes and we're gonna have overtime <laughs> to enjoy in just a few. We've seen Dorchester take three leads and Charlestown fight back three times. What has been a very entertaining squirt double A championship thus far. The clock sounds and we will go to overtime, Alan. What can you expect? The one thing to point out here is that Charlestown has three or four extra skaters so they might be the fresher team here in the extra session. That could play a little bit of dividends in these extra couple minutes. Here's the deal, if you're Dorchester, you dump the puck into the offensive zone and you dump and chase, send the puck in front of the net, and then when you get the opportun offensive opportunity, you shoot the puck and you never know what will happen. If you're Charlestown on the other end, uh, right now they definitely have the, the more individuality uh, of, the, of the team there. Uh, so right, if you're Charlestown, you want to use your, all the players, not just one player. I mean, yeah, they get they got some good skaters in in uh, uh, with Sorghini and and Nice, but uh, you got other guys too that will can definitely uh, put the puck into the net. So if I'm Charlestown, you want to use all your players, and then same thing when you get the puck in the offensive zone, shoot the puck. Third period, four to one in shots for Dorchester, but 
Charlestown tied it up with that individual effort by uh, Sorghini it to was, tie the game. It was, and it's a 3-3 game. It was 2-1 after the first, 2-2 two -two after the second, 3-3 three -three after the third. And Dorchester continues to skate right to left here in the final five minutes. This is where they've scored all three of their goals going this way. Behind the net, Sakaz creates some pressure. Armstrong centers it, but it's knocked down there by Brandon Banks. Centering feed, Sutich knocks it away with the stick. He made a couple of big saves in the third period to keep the deficit at just a single goal before Matthew Sorghini tied it. Playing it off the boards to himself. Good work there by Liam Shanks, whose feed for Banks is intercepted. Sakaz with it. Sakaz skating 3v3 at another offside. The clock will continue to move here. We're still in the first minute of overtime. This is game one of four today at Matthews Arena. All championship games in the 2019 Mayor's Cup Youth Hockey Tournament. Girls down at a few too many players. Now they'll <laughs> get Nice off. Connolly for Mannion. Mannion at the near circle, over skates the puck, gets it back. Mannion shot bouncers just wide. That was dangerous. Just missed. He's had some, some uh, good opportunities here this afternoon. Mannion in one. front, shoots and scores! Earning the winner in overtime for Dorchester is Declan Mannion, and he's the hero. As you see the celebration right below us, he just got to the right spot in the center and feed by Mannion. It caught a piece of Leo Sutich and went in. And Dorchester had four leads in this game. Never let Charlestown get on top, and it's Declan Mannion, the hero, for the Dorchester Chiefs. And I was just saying, he's had some off, great offensive opportunities Nothing to cash in except in overtime. And of course, the key play, the pass from the corner out in front of the net to Manion to set up that game winning goal. What a goal by Manion, but the main thing was that pass in the corner out in front to Manion. All game long, we talked about the fact that Dorchester played a little bit better as a team and Charlestown had a little bit more individual skill. And in the end, it's Dorchester using that teamwork to win this game as Manny took a terrific feed and able to put it up and off of Sutich. And what a fun moment this is for the boys from Dorchester as they're able to not only win the Squirt A double A championship, but to do it in front of a large crowd and to do it in overtime after they gave up the game tying goal with about three minutes left in a game that they thought they had already had won. Yeah, you got to give Dorchester a lot of credit. They could have gotten down uh, three times. I mean, they had a 2-1 lead, tied up 2-2, then a 3-2 uh, lead, again 3-3, and then uh, in, in the third period, late in that third period, the game-tying goal. But they stuck together as a team and, and pulled it out in overtime with the goal from uh, Mannion. And this is, this is such a fun little group. They had less players today than Charlestown. And they are so excited. Their gloves and sticks strewn all over the ice in front of their bench. I'm sure this is a moment that none of these young boys and girls will forget for a very long time as they win the Squirt AA Championship in dramatic fashion. A 4-3 overtime win, a minute and 47 seconds into overtime. Declan Mannion, the game winning goal, his first of the game to give Dorchester the victory. And everybody wants a hand on that trophy. Well, it's like the, uh, what is it, the Stanley Cup, right? Everybody Hopefully gets a little bit lighter. Uh, obviously, <laughs> a little bit lighter, obviously. But yeah, that's a great uh, thrill for these kids from Dorchester, get an opportunity to uh, win this Mayor's Youth Cup Championship here in 2019. And what a game it was. What an exciting game back and forth. We will take a break and wrap up here for Matthew Zarita from the Squirt Double A Championship. Oh, look, a redhead. <gasps> Staring contest. You 
still got it. I know. Come alive with the forest. The dad was cute. You're looking right at us. Visit discovertheforest.org to find a forest near you. Welcome back to Matthews Arena for the final time from this Squirt Double A Championship as Dorchester takes down Charlestown 4-3 in overtime. Declan Mannion with the game winner. My name is Seth Ransky, joined by Alan Siegel. And in the end, it was the combination play of Mannion and some of his teammates that proved to be the difference in this game. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, great pass. And Mannion had a great shot to, to set up the, the game winning goal. Missed the net or was deflected wide. Went into the corner. Obviously, Charlestown dug the puck out of the zone, sent it out in front. Manning was all alone, and, and uh, he beat the goaltender no problem and uh, won the game 4-3 uh, to three in overtime. What an exciting game uh, that was here in the Mayor's Cup Championship. Dorchester took four separate one-goal leads. Charlestown fought back every time, including tying the game with just over three minutes to go in the third period. And a big credit has to go to Bossomer, the goalie for this Dorchester team. Faced a lot of shots in this game, was able to keep his team in it despite a lot of individual talent on the Charlestown side. Yeah, he did. He made some great saves at the, near the end there, kept the puck out of the zone. And, of course, Dorchester was very good defensively, getting the puck out of harm's way, time in and time out to set up the offensive uh, opportunities. And, of course, for Charlestown, great individual efforts by Sorge, uh, two goals here tonight, uh, and, and great individual efforts if they just use their teammates a little bit more. Uh, I, I see big things for this uh, Charlestown team. I'd like to thank our... Big sponsors for this tournament, the Boston Parks and Recreation, Mayor Martin J. Walsh, P&G, Gillette, and of course the Boston Bruins Foundation. Of can't possibly forget ASPN HD. You can follow along all of the productions from Matthews Arena today on ASPNHD.com and ASPN HD's YouTube page. You can watch this game in full whenever you want on ASPNHD.com. That'll do it for us here from Matthews Arena as it's Dorchester over Charlestown, 4-3 in overtime.